Okay, Amazon. They're probably going to buy off more than they can chew. Well, I don't know how many people's actually invested in them or for things that they're invested in. But they've got their own delivery service now. And uh, that's going to be their electric vehicle. Which I got a cute little story to tell you about that. But I don't know where the green trucks come from. I guess that's from Holeless Foods. Uh, and they don't deliver everywhere, they're just delivering parts and bits and pieces. Eventually, they'll go to robots. That is not an Amazon dude. And that is not an Amazon truck. That's actually a P500. Uh, I'm going to assume they don't give them a lot of training in driving. Uh, but they say that they're going to have this huge fleet and they're going to be able to produce their own power it is exclusively for them to run things truck being one of them but uh, I know years ago there was how to drive and you went up one side of how to drive if you went to the right then you got just a little bit more pace to top of the hill. And the road quit. They didn't finish it. So you'd have to deliver and back up somebody's driveway, come back down. If you went to the left, it done the same thing, only it didn't even go as far as the right one. And But there was a street to come off of it. I think it was Annie Street. I don't know. It's been 20 years ago. So eventually, they finished the loop and Hunter Drive become Hunter Circle. This is a little visual. That's probably about a quarter of a mile, give or take. And those two streets, I can't remember the name of them. But the one, one of the last ones they put in was Conley Circle. It was still near dead ends, these two dead ends. Uh, but before you would go to about right here, and have turn and come back. Then you'd have to go to about right here and then turn and come back. Well, they completed this part right here. And I was hauling butt basically. You know how UPS drivers drive. And uh, but we were trained to we were trained to do it safe, safely. But there was all this building going on. And somewhere right in through here. They were working on a house right there by Collie Circle, sit right on the corner of it. And they had stretched an extension cord from the house across the street and stretched it pretty tall. It raised up to about four, three or four foot on each end. But then it laid flat in the road in the middle. Well, I just came through there and I think I had a P1100, I mean a P1000. And as I come through there, I heard something go pow. And I didn't pay no attention. I couldn't see nothing wrong with the truck. It was still running good. So I just kept going. Well, I got down and turned on, turned up. Uh, uh, I got my last delivery all turned and was going down South Cumberland. And I get right here to this intersection of uh, Lincoln and Algonquin and this old couple but that's a four lane this old couple pulled up the side of me now I was running a diesel engine I had already cut and seen this orange thing behind me and I thought oh crap that looks like a somebody's extension cord so old couple pulled up the side of me you know it's during the spring or summer had my door open she rolled her window down. She said, sir. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, uh, your cord's coming loose. It's hanging out of your truck. And I said, my cord? She said, yeah, looks like an extension cord. And I looked there and I said, oh, thank you so much. 
I'll have to when I get down here my next stop I'll have to reel it up and put it back in. I said we're trying these new electric vehicles out. And uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to plug it up when I got in tonight. I appreciate that. Now she's sitting there listening to the engine going up. <laughs> and believed every word of it. I <laughs> I got on down through there, made my deliveries to the next few places, and I turned on Brown Avenue, and right here, where was it? I mean, right here. Uh, Johnny Steins, who was a poster and primarily worked on old Mustangs. I didn't, I, there was no going back and giving him guys. I didn't broke their extension cord. So I looked at Johnny, and I said, you need extension cord? He said, yeah, and I said, you have to put an end on it, maybe two. He said, that's fine. It was about 30 foot of extension cord. But uh, I thought that was funny. You know, here they're going to make them. And there's a thing to that. They're letting on like uh, having an electric vehicle save the planet. But they don't have a zero energy machine the last few people that's invented one have been killed or died mysteriously. So, uh, they don't have a zero energy. And it's, zero energy is when you put no energy into it, but you get energy out of it. They've been invented several times. And the people have come across strange deaths. So, you know, right now, the only way they got getting energy is either those windmills. And I've never read, I don't know, I don't know how practical they are. Or fracking, uh, you know, getting the gas out of the ground. That ain't good. They push a chemical down in the ground at a fault line. And it, it pushes the gas back out. It destabilizes the fault line and it usually just rings the ground. Then you have nuclear. I sure don't want one near me. I mean, what happened in Fukushima is that every one of the nuclear power plants in the world, same people made it. Um, then you got hydro. Hydro would be okay, except our dams are getting old and they're beginning to weaken. Uh, solar, the solar's, it's a good pipe dream. But you ain't gonna live off of it. If any of this was any good, they would use it in countries like Africa. Well, we've managed pretty well to get people out, which is a shame. I mean, they don't have any type of stable energy because they seem to be the testing ground for anything, any new drug, any new disease. All because they have brown oil, which is worth a lot more than black oil. Uh, it's easier to refine and everything else. So that's why, that's why Africa is getting kicked while they're down. Well, as usual, I'm getting sidetracked. This is what we used to call a P400. And tandem rear end the wheels. I got dispatched one time. I was a young cover driver, and I'd been at work for a pretty good while, thanks to Ronald Reagan and his pissed down economics. But uh, we, they didn't tell me it didn't have brakes. They had it loaded to where there was very little tire left. It was, I mean, it was full of books and everything else. I had to go to BAS, what well, become BASF back then was Inca. That was a big stop. Wallace Hardware was a big stop. Union Camp, which was beside Wallace Hardware. And then I had to go all the way over to Cock County uh, to this place and deliver books. That's where the weight come from. What they didn't tell me is I come around the building. The only thing I had left was emergency brake. There was no brakes. There was no signal lights. This windshield on the passenger side was gone.
his windshield was gone. The driver's windshield itself was cracked. It looked like he could just fall in any minute. But uh, I'd been out of work, like I say, bit dirty. I'd haul hay and cut the back up. Uh, I didn't whatever I could do to make an honest dollar. So when I got on at UPS, I was just tickled to death. And that's the reason, that's why they didn't, uh, you know, most of us, we did what we were told. Not a question to ask. Uh, I drove about, when I first started driving, we had manual, they wouldn't power brakes, they would just, to go the car, you had to stop it. And, uh, Then, the clutch, oh my God, the clutch was horrible. We had no power steering whatsoever. And so what we'd do, we would try to keep as much as we could in the back of it. And uh, that power, that would stop the power, you know, and make it easier. Um, we had no, we weren't allowed to fail. Just a different world. This is, looks like a P500 from what I can tell. They come out with single back axles. Why UPS did that, God only knows. And this is, uh, like a P1100, maybe a P1000. The first P1000 didn't have power steering either. And then eventually they come in with them. This one was the last one that I drove. I think it's a P800. Uh, they got them in and they had little fans on them, blowed my mind. Now, uh, they've got automatics because they can't find people that know how to drive straight shifts. It looks like a P800. Drove that for a few years. I don't regret it. That's a 1400, I think. I think it's what they call it. I never did, thank God, I had to drive it. Because they would have stuck me out in the boonies some more. It would be hard to turn around. They had a, a car come over at UPS's terminal. No, it's not terminal. It's the Hilbert Center. And uh, I won't name the supervisor that was over it. But we were, because he, he promised you'd get in trouble. But we was, uh, we were all just smitten by it. I mean, it was the coolest thing we ever saw. So, UPS always has cameras in case there's an accident. You know, they have little uh, Polaroids. And uh, we all run over and climb in it. Take our turn, to, you know, four or five of us in at a time getting our pictures made and then all of a sudden a child comes in from way up above real high up above the car looks something like this or this and they said we don't want any fingerprints on it nobody's to go around it nobody's to touch it and nobody is to definitely be in it it's that's a toy, but that's what it is. That's what it was at the time. Well, here we was sitting there with God, hundreds of pictures. And uh, so we go trying to rub it down because uh, we didn't want the boss to get in trouble. We didn't want to get in trouble. And now Amazon stretched her claws out and <coughs> went into uh, the food market. I know we we uh, found some non-GMO corn in a can. I know we live on a farm with about canned corn, but uh, anyway, we found it at Walmart, 88 cents a can. And so we was on Amazon one night, and we looked it up. They were 288 a can. 
So, yeah, they can afford to give you 5% back because they're charging you 20% more. Um, we don't shop at Whole Foods. Whole Foods, one of the main people at uh, Whole Foods that had a lot of interest in it was Monsanto. Monsanto, as most of you know, are the ones that created Agent Orange, DDT, and Roundup. Uh, they could probably have some that said killing people every day. And that's what they're doing. That's what they've done. I don't know if Soros owns part of Whole Foods or not. I've seen his name, but I, it was kind of a screwed up website. Um, but I do like how they got 100% grass farm beef. Uh, I'll tell you a little secret on it. You have to really be stupid to believe it. When they say beyond, like Hardy's has a beyond whatever, sausage and biscuit, you know, all kinds of breakfast foods, and they're all plant-based. Well, if you have cattle, sheep, goats, even pigs, you're not going to destroy everything around it. What destroys everything around is plants. For one, most of them are genetically modified. Almost all sugar beets, all oats, uh, all corn, a lot of potatoes even. But, I mean, they knew which ones to go for. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is when you grow something out of that bastardized food, you have to put a lot of pesticides. You have to put a lot of herbicides. You have to put a lot of fertilizers. And where does that go? It goes in the ground. And where it gets washed out into the lakes and the rivers. And so, you have to be really ignorant to believe that eating a plant-based food is going to uh, be much better for you than beef or any other meat. Uh, Walmart, I found out, they've got some pretty good food. So, we, we go there, they've usually got better deals. It's just, you know, whatever you want. But, yeah, there are Walmarts are lacking a little on the seafood department. But, that's okay. Denise, my wife, has pretty much decided to boycott. Amazon. Uh, she was pretty put out with the corn. And that was before all this crap started. But she noticed something right off bat that I didn't. Uh, you know, I was just looking for to see if they were price gouging on masks and uh, you know, stuff to sterilize and bleach and stuff like that. Well, they're a little bit smarter than that. They didn't so much price gap on that as they did everything else. And you can't tell me this virus has caused coin shortages and food shortages. I watched on the internet and seen this guy. He turned under, a, I don't know how many acres of beans because he was told to by the government. They're setting us up for a fall. But meanwhile, people like Amazon, when, I, when he first got started, I talked to him. And he was a nice guy. But then as he got bigger and bigger and bigger, he got to where he wasn't so nice. And so, uh, you know, now he's one of the rich dudes. Uh, and what do rich people want? More. He wants to have more, and they want power. So if you don't think that all these people hang together 
and did all kinds of bad things to people, especially kids. You need to open your eyes. You know, and right here's 33 attorney generals tell Amazon to stop price gouging. Department of Justice asks consumers to report coronavirus price gouging from Amazon. But that's what they want. And they'll keep doing it because they've bought off our government. Sucks. But until we get off our ass and vote for real people, or actually until we can find some real people to uh, actually run it, worth voting for because we got nobody then and until then vote with your dollar it's only vote you got to get you hit them where it hurts they'll, they'll change something but anyway Be that for this one. And surely to God, this thing did not quit recording.